I'm Luke Melke, helping you master the art of filmmaking. Today we're talking about directing volunteer actors and crew. Obviously we do this because we want to save some money, but how do we actually direct volunteers and how do we select them? Well, I think obviously the first thing we need to do is select your volunteers. This doesn't mean putting out a call like, hey, anybody want help with a film? Unless you're really desperate or trying to fill extra roles, that's typically not a good idea because you'll get a lot of people who want to make movies that have ideas, but they really don't have the skill sets needed to make films. So you really want to try to handpick your volunteers, ask them specifically, hey, would you be interested in doing this? Hey, would you think about doing this? Hey, do you have anybody that you know who might be able to do some filmmaking? So what are the things you want to look for when you're handpicking your volunteers? You want to get someone who's willing to listen and not be argumentative. There's nothing more annoying as a director on set than having crew or actors constantly trying to correct you. Like, well, I saw it this way once, or I don't really think that's the way it would do it. It doesn't mean your actors and crew can't have some input, but if they're always challenging you, that's that's just going to be a problem. So try to get ones who are willing to listen and work with you and not going to always be debating and arguing you. You want to make sure you have some hardworking, not lazy crew and actors. It's another one of the big pet peeves for me is someone who just kind of sits around and doesn't do the work that they need to do. Like, yeah, I understand you're a volunteer, but you still need to work hard. You still need to give it your best because I could have found someone else who might as well do a better job than you. But if you're sitting there being lazy, I really I can't fire you because I'm not hiring you. So it's even more awkward to tell someone they leave when you're not even getting paid. So try and find someone who's hardworking and not lazy. Does the person pay attention to little details? This is a big thing for me is film is really about the little details. That makes a big difference between the great films and the okay films is the little details. You don't want to have someone that's never run audio before. You ask me, how did it sound? They're like, oh, great. And then when you get the audio back, you're like, it was at negative 45 dBs the whole time. What am I going to do with this? If I crank it up to usable levels, we're going to have a lot of other problems with it. So you want to make sure the person understands the little details can work with that. Maybe the person that's always adjusting the pictures in the wall or something, make sure they're straight. That's probably the person that's going to pay attention to the little details for you. You want to make sure the person is creative when at all possible. Not every position do they have to be creative, but it's generally a good idea to have someone who's creative. That will help you a lot. So you don't have to explain every little detail to them. They will kind of innately understand this looks better than this. There's some positions where you can tell them, hey, move that light, move it there. Okay, adjust it. Okay, leave it right there. There are some times where you can have that, but most of the time you want to have your cast and crew to have some creative talents as well. This is a huge one, especially in a lot of the culture today is dependable. You can't have someone who's just going to not show up or show up late, or if they're going to just not put the effort and all that into memorizing their script. So when it comes down to actually being on set, they're still trying to memorize their script on the set. And that's just a huge problem that's going to slow everything down. That's just going to make it much more difficult for everybody involved. So make sure you pick people who are dependable and you know that you're going to be able to work with them. Communication. That's something we hear about in a lot of areas, but in film is definitely a big area. You need to make sure you communicate clearly and communicate often. So what are the things that you need to communicate? You want to make sure your cast and crew understand what is expected of them. If they've never done something like this before, they have no idea what they're getting into. They're probably saying yes, but like, oh, my friend said, hey, would you want to do a film? Sure. I always thought it might be kind of fun, but I have no idea what I'm doing. But they probably won't verbalize that. They'll be like, oh, sure, this should be fun. And they get on set, and they're probably inside kind of terrified or just totally clueless. And they should be terrified. So you want to make sure they know what's expected of them before they actually even get to set. And while they're on set, you want to keep reminding them if they have any questions and things like that as well. You want to make sure they know when and where they need to be. Not every actor, not every crew member needs to be at every location. And they don't necessarily have to be there at the beginning every time either. Your crew typically needs to be there a little bit earlier than your actors just to make sure everything's functioning. And they understand the kind of the backbones of how everything's going to work before your cast show up. Another big thing you want to do is make sure you meet with your primary cast and crew in advance. 
that way they, they know what's expected of them. They can ask the question specifically on the script, like, hey, what does this mean? What do you mean by this note here? Or what am I supposed to do? I actually have no idea what this means here. You can explain all that through in maybe two hour meetings. So when it actually gets on set, everything goes smoothly. It doesn't waste as much time. And when you have equipment, even on small budget productions, a lot of times you're renting equipment or borrowing equipment or you're trying to get a location for free. If you only have it for one day, you can use it. So you want to make sure you're really, really efficient on set. So make sure you explain everything in advance with them, at least the primary actors and crew members to make sure they understand what's expected of them. I like to have a round table meeting with all of my primary actors, basically everyone that aren't extras. Then we can read through the script and everyone gets an idea of who their characters are in relation to everyone else that's on the set. And then they can also ask you questions. They can develop their character with you instead of you are expecting one type of character and they come on set with something else. And then you have to try to fix it on set. That's not cool. You want to make sure you meet with them at least once to talk through everything so everyone's on the same page. That way, once again, when you're on production, you're not trying to explain all this stuff and losing your valuable time. Make sure you are open for suggestions and questions. You got to make sure you're also willing to listen. Just because you thought of something and you're the expert doesn't mean you're the only one with good ideas. You want to make sure you're listening to everyone else. Get their input. If they have suggestions... They might be great, they might be absolutely horrible, but still listen. And if it's not a good idea, you don't have to ap apply what it is that they're mentioning to you. You can take it and smile and then not apply it, or you can be like, no, that was a really good idea. Let's do that. Or sometimes you might even say, that's a good idea, but it doesn't quite fit with what we're doing here, or that was a good idea, but we've already started this direction, so we can't switch gears now without having to redo other things. So make sure the people, when they come to you, know that you are listening, even if you don't necessarily apply everything that they suggest. Come prepared. This is a big thing when you're coming to a set with volunteers. They really don't know what they're doing in advance, more than likely. So you want to make sure you come prepared. You have everything down, know exactly what's happening from top to bottom all the way through. That way you can answer any questions that they might have and just make it easier when they come on set if you tell someone they're running the camera, they only have to worry about lining up the shot and hitting record. Hopefully they don't have to worry about, oh, is the white balance set right? Is my exposure right? Hopefully most of that stuff you were able to get lined up for them in advance. That way they can just come in and do their basic skill levels is still going to be good enough for the production. You really want to make sure you have your shot list ready before you get on set. This will make things go a whole lot smoother, a whole lot faster. Not everyone needs to see your shot list in advance. But you need to have one. That way you have one less thing you have to worry about and try figuring out on the fly. You want to have your shot list already set up and be ready to be flexible with your shot list as well. You want to make sure you have your lights and audio mapping all figured out. The lights are already set up. The mics are basically ready to go. That way when your volunteers show up, they don't have to worry about is the mic on? Is it is the light actually set up properly? Do I need to move the light as much? Obviously, there's going to be some tweaking of things. But if the primary setup is done, you don't have to worry about so much with your volunteers. First of all, getting it wrong. or Actually, a lot of times the volunteers can break stuff as well, and that can get kind of expensive. So if you have it pretty well set already, then the volunteers don't have to do as much. You have less chance of things breaking. You're going to want to make sure you're ready for things to go wrong because... Honestly, there's always going to be something that goes wrong. So when you're working with volunteers and that, try to get ready for what might potentially go wrong and have a backup plan for that. I try to have a backup plan for most everything. I try to have backup equipment, uh, backup even crew. If possible, I can call on somebody if someone gets sick. Uh, just try to have backup plans for pretty much everything. I've even had times where we get ready to set up for location. The location backs out on us because we're working with volunteer or low-budget locations. You have to be ready to shift gears. Maybe even you have to rewrite the script slightly to make it work, but be ready to always be flexible. When you're working with volunteers, you also need to make sure you plan for extra time. You might think it's only going to take a certain period of time, but in actuality, it's probably going to take a lot longer. My general experience is if you expect something to take one hour, it's probably going to take closer to three hours. That's just kind of how it works when you're working with volunteers. The more experienced they are, the less additional time it's going to take. 
but just in general of filmmaking, when you're shooting something, it's going to take longer on set than you were expecting it to take. So always prepare for a little bit of extra time. Don't put your schedule so tight that if something goes long, it's not going to work. So always give yourself a little bit of flex room on the time. So I've already mentioned we need to make sure we communicate, but how do we communicate on set? Well, one of the big things is don't use the technical lingo. For me, I just kind of think that natively. I think the ISO, I think the aperture, I think the the lighting color, the balance. Of, but most of my crew, they don't have a clue what I'm talking about. I say, make sure you have everything set for 5600 Kelvin. They're going to look at me and go, who? Okay, that's not a good thing when you're on set. You don't want people wondering about that. So try to speak in a little bit more common terms. Uh, that they'll, they're they going to understand, like, okay, this light's a little bit cooler, this light's a little bit warmer, we need to adjust the lights so they fit a little bit better. Most people can understand if a light's a little bit warmer color, a little bit cooler color, but if I say, that's a little bit closer to 3200, they're probably not going to know what I'm talking about, and they're going to look at me just a geek, and they're going to feel awkward when they can't communicate with me. So make sure you communicate with common lingo. So when you're working with your actors, you don't want to use result-oriented directing. This is one that's just a huge pet peeve of mine. Is when actors are like, oh, how do I do this? And the director comes out and shows them how it's done. Well, if you're the director showing them how it's done, why aren't you out there doing it yourself? Because what's going to happen is the actor is going to see what you're doing, and they're going to go, oh, I'm going to act like the director. They're not going to act like the character anymore. They're going to try imitating you instead of actually becoming the character. And you really want to make sure your cast, they're going to actually become the character. So you want to explain an emotion with them. Okay, this is the emotion I want to come through. Don't say, I want you to be happy or sad, because that's going to be result-oriented directing, because there's a zillion different types of sad. There's a zillion different types of happy. If you say, I want you to be more happy, more perky, you're going to get, and that's just really awkward. You're going to get a lot of corny acting that way. And that's a lot of times the actors aren't necessarily what's so bad as the directors are bad in low budget films. So you want to make sure you work with emotions that they already understand. So if you want them to be a little bit more depressed or sad, something like that, relate to emotion that they can actually connect to something they've actually experienced. Be something about like, if this is maybe extreme example here, but if you know that they had a dog that died when they were a child, say, what was it that you felt? How did you react when the dog died when you were eight years old. Sometimes it might get a little bit too touchy. You got to know your actors to know how much they're going to be willing to give and take with something like this. But you're going to get the emotion that you want if you say, I want you to remember what it was like when your dog passed away. That's what I want to see portrayed. And they can go back into their memory bank and go, this is what I felt. This is what I experienced. You're going to have a, a true emotion coming through. Not say, I want you to be sad and depressed. That can mean anything, and they're going to try acting depressed and acting sad instead of actually becoming sad or depressed for those moments on screen. So work really hard not to have result-oriented directing. Try and pull from actual emotions that they experience. You want to make sure you are encouraging on set. That doesn't mean every single time you're like, good job, even though it was a horrible job. But try to be as overall you have a positive experience for your cast and crew because a lot of times they're probably going to feel like they're doing a bad job unless you're encouraging them. Tell them, you did a good job here. I really like what you're doing here. Good energy. That was a great take. Even if it's not necessarily as good a take as you want. Like That was a great take, but we're going to try it again because we want to just tweak this little thing here. You want to make sure they're encouraged because they're going to probably feel discouraged if you don't constantly encourage them. So that's a big thing. Try not to be so negative on set. Try to be positive and continually encourage you. Don't just assume why compliments them once. Isn't that good enough? No, it's not. You want to be continually encouraging, continually make sure that they feel like you're appreciating them. You also want to make sure you're patient. Patience is a huge thing on film sets. It's, especially with volunteers, you're going to constantly want to feel like you're going to pull your hair like, no, we want to do it this way, but why? No, but don't let that come out. Okay, understand that they don't know what they're doing. And that's some of the things you're going to have to work through because you're not paying people. You have volunteers. So make sure you're patient and working with them. Understand the way that they're working, the way they think. Understand they've never done this before. They're at one time. You had never done it before either. So work with them. Understand that 
they might not quite understand what's happening and make sure you're patient with them. If you like this video, please comment, like, share, show it to your rich uncle, make sure they know you really want to get into filmmaking so you don't have to always get volunteers, but he can pay for your big, amazing productions. Let me know if you have any questions below. If you really want to know something about filmmaking, I'll try and add it to another video. Thank you for watching.